everyone, this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a couple of bracelets and a necklace with the Winter Wonders Treasure Bag. Now, um, you can use these techniques on stuff you have in your stash. You do not have to do them exactly the same way, so do not feel left out. Plus, I have a lot of this stuff on my website, so if you want to try it, you can. So, these are the two bracelets, and I have put them on together, which probably is a little much, but let me get them so you can see them. So I did little teddy bear dangles and the little bell here on this one, and then this one here. And um, with this one, I put a toggle clasp on it. It might be better with a lobster cloth because the toggle tends to kind of be a little bulky for the smallness of the beading chain. This is done with traditional beading wire, just your basic beading techniques. This one is done with beading chain, and you can see how cute they turn out. And then we're going to make a simple necklace to match this bracelet, although this one with the color scheming I did matches really well with it too. So we're going to go ahead and make this bracelet first and then I'll come back show you what I use for these and make those. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. See ya in a second. Okay, so we're going to make a little dingly charm bracelet first here. And what I have are things from the Winter Wonders Treasure Bag. However, this is a techniques video as always. You can draw inspiration from it. You can use the same technique and use similar things and still make this project. So what I'm going to be using is I, am, I have cut two 12 inch pieces of soft flex medium beading wire. Now this might be a little bit more than I need. It probably is quite a bit more than I need, but I want to make sure I have enough. So I've cut two 12 inch pieces. And then I am going to be using some of the drop beads that came in the treasure bag. These are faceted drops and they are 9 by 4 I believe. Now you could substitute this with a elongated bicone that's 8 by 4. You could even substitute it with one of the longer ones. I think they're 12 by 4. And you just have to adjust your length accordingly. But you could definitely substitute these beads quite easily. Then I'm going to be using four of these barrel beads. Now I do have some more of these in packs of 16 in gold and silver on my website. So if you want some, you can get some. I'm using the four gold beads and then I'm going to be using the two teddy bears here. And then I'm going to be using the one little jingle bell charm. So basically you just need three charms of your choice. I'm going to be using four six millimeter round beads. I'm going to be using the clear um, faceted, pentagon faceted or English cut beads that are in your bag. And then I'm going to be using three of these little bale hanger um, dangle things that were in the bag too. And I do have a lot more of these and I will have them available on the website if you want some of them. And then we are going to be using, let's see what did I skip, two of the little clamshell ends, bead tips. And again, I have those available too. So if you don't have any, you can get some, but most people have those in their stash. We'll be using two of those. We're going to be using some jump rings and I have about a five millimeter round jump ring here. And that's the outside diameter. And I'm also, I think I'm going to use a lobster claw. You can use your toggle clasp if you would like, but I think I'm going to use a lobster claw for this. So I'm going to use this lobster claw and a large jump ring that's about 8 millimeter and a 6 millimeter jump ring. And then I'm going to be using some size 2 Beetalon crimp tubes. You can also use a, a round um, bead crimp bead size one if you'd like, but you're going to be better off with a size two with this since we're using a double strand. And I also have some 110 seed beads. This is Toho Galvanized Permanent Finish Starlight. And if you'd like, of course, you can use one of these toggles that was in the bag. So that's what we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and get started. 
Okay, to start this project, you're going to pick up both of your pieces of beading wire that you have cut. This is beetle on medium. You can also use a fine, probably work a little bit easier. And you need a clamshell. So you're going to put your two pieces of wire together. Now, we're going to go through the bottom of the clamshell through this hole. I have found sometimes it's a little tight. I take my round nose pliers and just gently put it in there and just kind of ream it a little bit like that and then that will increase the hold just slightly get anything that's in the way out of the way and then you can run both of your pieces of wire up through the bottom so I'm going to put my two pieces together and then I'm going to put them through the hole on the clamshell just like this from the bottom so that the opening of the clamshell is towards the end of your wire just like this and then I'm going to pick up a size 2 crimp tube onto my wire on both of them. So I'll just put them back together and pick up a crimp tube. Just like this. Now I'm just going to bring that crimp tube down just a little bit like this so that I can work with it. Get you in close. Now I'm going to grab my crimping tool. You can just get a pair of chain nose pliers and just squash this flat too if you would like. But on this end, since I can do this, I'm going to. I'm going to place the crimp tube in the second divot, the one closest to my handle, in my crimping tool. And I'm just going to center that little crimp tube and squeeze. And now that I have squeezed it, you can see I have a little groove in the middle. So on either side of it, there are little tubes. I'm going to place those tubes touching the first divot of the crimping tool like this. So I'm putting it in sideways and then I am going to squeeze again and make this really nice and secure, just like that. Then I am going to take my clamshell and move it up to the crimp tube. But I think first I'm going to cut down what I've left sticking out quite a bit because it won't allow my clamshell to close. So just like this, I've just left a little bit sticking out there. And now I can lift my clamshell up and pinch it shut. And then I'll grab a pair of flat nose pliers here and I'll just squeeze that shut and then right here right above the belly of the clam here right where the loop starts I'm going to give it a nice tight squeeze and that usually will kind of seal it together really nice for you like that you can put a drop of glue in there too before you close it to make sure it's nice and secure but I find this works out fine so now that we have our end together, we are going to start beading these. And like I said, my 12 inch is a little long, but it does take up some room on the wire when you put your beads on. So, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, my two wires together and I'm going to put on a barrel bead. And then I'm just going to bring it down to the end of these two wires. And then I'm going to kind of straighten and separate the wires a little bit. And then I'm going to pick up an 11-0 seed bead. And this is a Toho 11-0. And it fits over this wire just fine. Like I said, you can use fine wire too. That will work really good. Then we're going to put it on an 11-0 on both sides, on both wires. And just kind of pull the wires apart and bring those down the best you can. And then we're going to use some of our long drops here. Now, a bicone, elongated bicone will work really well for this. I do not have any of these in my store right now. I will order some and eventually get some, but I think I ordered them all because they're hard to get right now. So, and they only come in two colors, so, you know. These, I have noticed, are a little bit different in length. Some of them are really short and some of them are longer. Make sure you kind of pick out ones that are basically the same length. So these two are good. So I'm going to put them on from the narrow side down towards my bead. And the more broad side will be out towards the wire here. And I'm going to put one on either strand, just like this. And then I'm going to pick up another 11 L on both wires. Just 
and then another drop and I'm going to go from broadside down now so I'm going to put the broadside down first towards that 11 0 and let's back off just a little more and then another on this side just like that and then 11 0s on both And drop those down and then I am going to pick up a one of my six millimeter round crystals and I'm gonna trim my ends down here because they're not quite even and see if I can I guess it really truly doesn't matter I'll just hold them even and I'm going to put both wires into this bead here and I'm going to drop it down. So whatever you're using, just make sure you can pass two pieces of wire through it. And if you're using fine wire, you won't have a big issue with that. You can find almost anything that'll fit. Well, once I've done this, then I'm just going to pull on both the strands, separate them, make sure that you can pull them down and get all the slack out from between the beads. So you may see a tiny bit of wire, but you're not gonna see a ton. So it needs to look like that. And then you're going to grab one of your bail hanger loop thingies, and you're going to slide that on both wires. <laughs> My two wires are very different on this end. And then, and I am gonna go ahead and trim that just cause it's gonna drive me nuts. So let's trim those down and fling it across the room again. And here is my six millimeter here. And I am going to put another one on the piece here. And as I do this, I'll just kind of straighten my beads and try to get the slack out, just like that. Now we're going to do another section like this. So we are going to pick up and cross my wires here and I'm going to pick up an 11 0 on either strand whoops fling that across the room too I'm gonna to have some cleaning to do when I'm done here <laughs> just flinging everything all over the place like I don't have a care in the world and but I do know I'm the one that has to pick it up so I guess it's okay alright now I'm going to again drop down some of my drop beads. Let me pick out two that are the same length here. See, some of them are very narrow, some of them are fatter, some of them are, they're just not really consistent. So I want to try to get some that are pretty close. Those two are okay. And then I'll drop down the narrow side. See what I've got. Yeah, they're close enough. And then I will pick up 11 O's again. Let me back off so I stay in camera here. You can actually see what I'm doing without my big old fat hands blocking everything. And then again, two drops the opposite direction. So the broad side down first. And then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. Now, the way I have designed this, as far as length is concerned, you kind of end up with what you end up with. And this is about a seven and a half inch bracelet. I will measure it to make sure. But if you want to make it smaller, you're going to have to kind of rearrange or use shorter or smaller beads here so that you can get a shorter bracelet. If you want a longer one, you can always add an extension on the back. So you'll have to adjust it that way. Now I'm going to pick up another barrel bead and slide it over both of my wires here. And then I'm going to pick up one of my dangly bale things and drop it down. And then another one of my gold beads and drop it down. And now I'm going to repeat this pattern again all the way to the end. So I'll put in a green section, a clear section, 
a green section and then my big bead and then we'll come back and I will show you how to crimp off the end and then we'll hang our dangles but go ahead and just copy what you did in reverse to finish the side and we'll be back okay so this is what you should have now now you want to make sure that you kind of straighten everything up, pull on each wire, make sure that there's no slack. Now a soft flex, I can go back in and give it a little flexibility even though I have it tight after I crimp it off. So I'm getting it as tight as I possibly can and this is what it looks like, just like this. And then I am going to we're, trim this down a little bit. I do have a lot of excess here so I'm going to just trim it down some and I'll trim it down again but I'm just going to trim it down some. I am going to take my clamshell now. Oops, first I have to put on my last bead. Doo -doo, I missed my barrel bead. So make sure you end on your barrel bead just like you did on this side. Do the exact same pattern. And then I am going to pick up my clamshell and put both ends or both wires through it on the bottom of the clamshell, just like that. And then I'm going to grab a crimp tube. And on this side, it's hard to get in with your crimping pliers so or your crimping tool. So we'll probably just squeeze it shut. So I'm going to get a little pair of flat nose out here. And I'm going to drop a crimp tube down on both of these wires. I'm going to drop it down into the clamshell just like this and again make sure I have no slack or anything weird going on see right here I have some slack so I'm going to pull each wire individually to kind of draw in that slack there we go okay and now I have my crimp tube down inside that little clamshell I'm going to open my clamshell just a little more and try to hold everything tight here my wires adjusted and then I'm just going to grab this little needle nose um, chain uh, blah, 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 you know chain pliers you know you know what I mean <laughs> these little skinny pliers and I'm going to squeeze that tight while pushing down on everything to make sure that it's right in the place I want it to be and I'm going to squeeze it very tightly now again you can put a drop of glue in there if you would like I am going to get my flush cutters and I'm going to cut these wires off right above that um, crimp tube just like that and get you in really close so you can see what I have so I have my crimp tube right at the bottom of that um, clamshell so that it's nice and tight and then I think I need to trim these even a little more because I don't want them to stick out so I think my flesh cutters are getting a little dull too. Everything I pick up is dull and it doesn't want to work. And it just drives me crazy. Okay. So then I'm just going to pinch this closed just like that. Make sure that both ends are lined up. So sometimes you have to squeeze it on either side. And then I'm going to grab my flat nose. I'm going to squeeze the clamshell closed and then right above the belly of the clamshell right on the loop. I'm going to give it a nice tight squeeze and then I'm going to move up to the end of the loop and give it another squeeze and that should pretty much weld it together pretty good for you. Just like that. Now I am going to grab some jump rings. I'm going to use gold jump rings and I am going to get my little loops adjusted here so when you dropped it on, you dropped the wide part down onto the wire, of course, and then you have this little loop exposed here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple pairs of chain nose pliers and find the opening on a jump ring. And like I said, these are about five millimeter in diameter on the outside. And I'm just going to five or six, something like that. I'm just going to crank it open just by twisting the clam, the clamshell. Oh my goodness. By, you know, this thing, this jump ring, this thing thing. Yeah, whatever it is. Just don't listen to what I say because I'll mess you all up. And I'm going to take my bell and I'm going to put my bell on to this jump ring. And then in this very center one, I am going to put the jump ring on the loop 
and then I'm just going to twist that jump ring back so it's closed. Now I have my center dangle. Then I'm going to grab my two little teddy bears and I'm going to do the same thing, of course. So just find the opening on your jump ring, place a player on either side, twist it open, put um, your teddy bear on and put him on so his face is facing towards you and then close it. Like that. And then I'm going to do this one. So I have stereo teddy bears here. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And that's not closed well. There we go. All right. So now I want to give this a little flexibility. Like I said, it's soft flex, so I can just go in and just kind of give it some flexibility now. And just move the beads around, just kind of give it some flexibility so that it kind of stands up when you put it together. It's doubled like this, so you want it to be kind of cuff shaped like this. And then I am going to put on a lobster claw on this. You can go ahead and put on your toggle, but I found in my first one it gave me a little bit too much length. And this, depending upon what size clasping, you can also adjust your length with. Plus, with a lobster claw, you can make an extension if you need to. So, I am going to use, um, I think I'm going to use a small gold jump ring on one side and then I will use my larger jump ring for my clasping. So I have this big jump ring here. So I am going to put this on and then I'm going to put it on the small jump ring on the clamshell here. If I can get it through there. There we go. And close it. nice and tight and then and you know you can use a heavier gauge here too because this this little gold one isn't quite as heavy gauge as the silver one so I could have used this heavier gauge one but I'm not going to so there and then I'm going to use another gold one over here just blending my gold and silver tones together and I'm going to put this on the clamshell end and then I'm going to put my lobster claw on close it and voila now I can mess with it a little more to get it some more flexibility give it some cuff shape like this and look at how cute that is and this is what it looks like I'm going to go ahead and put it on my wrist I'll come back and show you what it looks like because trying to do a clamshell on camera is or a clamshell. Now now the lobster claws are clamshells too. Everything today is a clamshell. That's that's the way it's gonna be. I'll be right back. And here it is. And um I'm gonna measure this while we're on camera here because this is measuring on my wrist more like an eight inch bracelet. And like I said, you can do some adjusting with the size of your clasp. You can decide to rearrange your beads a little bit. Maybe instead of using two six millimeter rounds here, you use two four millimeter rounds. Um, however you want to, to get it to be a little bit smaller, that will work out fine. This is okay, because like I said, I want it to be kind of cuff shape, so it's working out okay. However, I am going to measure this because and I have a very large lobster claw too. I could use a smaller lobster claw and a smaller jump ring and get less length also. There are several ways you can adjust the length if you would like. Let me see if I can get this off. Okay, let me measure this. It 
And yes, this is an eight inch bracelet. Yeah. So yeah, that's why it was fitting me a little large. And the layout of the beads and the size of the beads, it's not a lot you can do to adjust that unless you change your beads a little bit. So like I said, you can change the adjustment of your beads or use different beads. But basically that is the process to make your little dangle bracelet just like that. And um, I think, again, I may go ahead and find a smaller clasping to put on here. And instead of having two jump rings on this side, I'll have one. And um, I'll just use a smaller jump ring to attach my clasping. And that will bring me down a little bit and it'll fit my wrist much nicer. So that's what that looks like. And let's see if we can make something else. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make another bracelet. This is a little double strand. I'm using the large crystals and the little spacer beads, and you can see how pretty this turns out. Now I'm going to take it off so you can see it. I've also made a matching necklace, and we're going to make that set really quickly. This is really easy. You do not have to have the treasure bag. You just have to have some beading chain and some clamshell ends, and you can make this also. Here is the necklace. It's just a little matching set here. It's really cute and I'll show it to you better at the end here. But um, you can use any beads you want for this. You do not have to use the beads I'm using. I'm going to show you the method I use and then you can make this with anything you want. So we're going to use some clamshell ends. You're going to need four of them for the bracelet. I have put one on already, so I have three laying out here. You need some size one crimp beads. So I'm using the beetle on size one round crimp beads and then I am using a toggle clasp and then I'm going to use and a lobster claw will work really well for this too I'm going to use some of the three millimeter spacer beads that are in the bag you can use anything you want they don't have to be three millimeter you can just use whatever lays out nice together and then I'm going to use four of these big green crystals and this is I believe they're 13 by 9 or 13 by 10, something like that. Crystals, just to give you an idea, I have these in variety packs, so if you want some, you can get one. And then um, I have some of these jump rings that are silver tone, and on the outside diameter, they're about four millimeter. So I'm using that. And we're just going to do a really simple process here. So I've already ended one of my chains. I'm going to end the other one really quick. That way we can lay them out next to each other and figure out exactly how we want to put our beads on. And I'm just going to put my other one down here so I can just kind of remember what I did here. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick up our beading chain. We're going to put one of the little round crimp tubes on the end. So let me get one that will actually go on my chain here, just like that. <clears throat> I've got a little pair of chain nose pliers. I'm going to get you in close because this is really, really tiny. So I'm going to get you in as close as I can here without blurring. And we are going to crimp this little bead down. So I've got it on my chain. I'm just going to move it to where there's about a millimeter of chain hanging out there and I am just going to squeeze it really tight onto there and make sure that it is secure. Then once I have put this little bead on the end here, I am going to grab my clamshell and I'm going to go from the inside and through the hole just like this, so that the opening is towards my crimp bead. And then I'm just going to bring it down and I am going to close my clamshell nice and tight. Make sure that it lines up, the hole is nice and clear, the two little loops on either side line up nicely together. And then take your flat nose pliers and just gently squeeze the belly and gently, don't dent it, and then go right above the belly, right on that loop, real close to the belly, and squeeze once, and then squeeze towards the top of the loop. And that should weld that together nice, just like that. You can put a drop of glue in there if you would like. And this is what I have now. I have two pieces that are 
are identical here. And then I can just start laying out my design and figuring out where I want to start and what I want to do. Now on my original one, I put two of the bigger beads on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting on a crib tube. And I'm just going to bring it down to the end here. And I'm going to leave about a quarter inch of space from my clamshell end to where my crimp bead is here. Right about there. And then I am going to grab my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to squeeze that down nice and secure, just like that. Then I'm going to grab my big crystal and I'm going to put my crystal on and then I'm going to put on another crimp tube or crimp bead, whatever. These little round ones look better than the square ones when you crimp them down. So that's why I'm using them. If you want to use a regular size two, then you have to use your crimp tool and put it on as if you would put on a regular crimp bead. And um, I have a video called Beading Chain 101 that shows you how to do all that. So if you want to use crimp beads, different crimp beads, and you want to learn different methods to do this, watch Beading Chain 101 and that will show you everything you need to know. Now I'm just going to crimp this little bead. I'm going to make sure it's nice and close to that crystal, but I'm not strangling that crystal and I'm just going to squeeze that down. Make sure your bead is nice and secure and then we'll lay out the chain the other chain next to it so we can get an idea of spacing. So you can just look at it without having to measure every single little bit. You can pretty much figure out where your next section needs to be. So I am going to go into my next chain. I'm going to pick up a crimp tube. I don't know why I'm trying to do that with my left hand. That's just not even going to happen. So. I'm going to put the crimp tube on and then I'm going to lay out my chains side by side making sure that they're flush up here and then I'm going to go just a little bit, maybe a millimeter or two past the crimp bead on the other chain right there. And then I'm going to squeeze down that crimp tube just like that. Make sure it's secure. And then I'm going to put on five of my gold beads. And you can, this beading chain is kind of floppy, you can um, put a little bit of super glue on the end of it to harden it if you need to, but I'm finding that this is working well without it. So I'm just going to put on five of my, or, I used four. I'm going to put on four of my little beads here. Just like that. And then I can put on another crimp tube. Bring it all together. And again, you can pull on the end of your chain. Um, make sure that you're not strangling your beads, but you have no slack there. And just crimp that down. Just like that. Now I can line it back up. And then I can make sure that it's flush on your end with your little tubes here, or with your bead tips with your clamshells. Make sure that they're pretty close to each other so that your measurements are not off. And then now I want to put a set of the little gold beads on this chain. So you can see in my original d design I did crystal and then two sets of the gold and then a crystal and then two sets of the gold. So what I have to do is I have to grab another crimp tube and I will put it on, <clears throat> excuse me, I will put it on my crimping chain or on my crimping chain, yeah, mm -hmm, on my beading chain and move that crimp tube 
to where it is just a little bit beyond the crimp tube on my previous set on my opposite chain. Just like that. And then I will crimp it down. Now laying this out first so you basically know where everything is going to go is going to help you because you don't want to get to the end and have not enough or too much chain to finish your pattern. So you, laying it out a little bit first will work really well. With this, I have already pretty much measured it out for you. So if you're using the same things I am, then you don't have to worry about it. Otherwise, lay yourself out a little pattern. You can use your bead board or you can just lay it out on your bead mat or you can string it on your chain and arrange it around until you know that the pattern you're using is going to work on both chains and then go ahead and start putting your beads on. Now I'm going to put on five of my little spacers here. Four actually. I don't know why I have five stuck in my head but it's four. And then I am going to drop down a crimp bead also. And you can do this in a random pattern too. It doesn't have to be an actual pattern like I'm doing to where they're um, spaced out. You could put just a single bead here and then a single bead down here, a single bead down there. You can do this any way you want. All you have to do is make sure that um, the pattern is going to lay out with the length of chain you have and um, just randomly put on one bead here, one bead there, whatever you want to do and then squeeze this down. And again, it doesn't have to be a pattern either. It can just be beads on the chain, so you don't even have to worry about whether it's going to work out perfectly or not because it's just going to be randomly spread out. You can do that too. Now I want to do another crystal, so I'm going to come to this chain. Pick up. Come here, you. <clears throat> and I will bring it down. And I lost it. No, I didn't. There it is. Okay. And again, line up my pieces. And you can measure this out with a ruler, too, and know that you're going to do exactly a half inch between each one and mark the chain with a Sharpie or something so you know where to put your crimp tubes. But I am, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. This one isn't absolutely perfectly spaced, but it looks nice and it works out well. So you can do it this way or you can be more precise. It's up to you. Okay, so I want to go just a little bit beyond the crimp tube there and then squeeze. And then I'll put on my crystal. And then another crimp tube. And I'm just going to kind of hold on to my chain so I can make sure that it didn't move and squeeze it really well. Okay, so this is how you do this and I'm just going to continue measuring from my previous bead. So I'll put on another set just like this <clears throat> and get this laid out here. So I'll just continue. I'll do exactly what I did on this half on this half now. And then we'll come back and we'll put our little clamshells on and turn it into a bracelet. So just continue measuring your beads out and continue putting them on and we'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> so now you can see I have finished 
I'm putting my beads on and they spaced out really nicely for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the clamshell on either end here. So now you have to put the clamshell on first and you have to put it on from the bottom so that the opening is towards the end of the chain. And so I'm going to put that on and then I am going to grab one of my little crimp tubes and I'm going to slide that on. Let's see if I can do it like this. And then I'm just going to bring it right to the very end of my chain and only have just a tiny bit of chain hanging out. Get you in close because these are tiny little guys. And then just squeeze it. Make sure it's very secure. And then bring your if you have a bunch hanging out, you're going to have less of your spacing right, so you don't want a bunch hanging out. But if you do, you can trim it down a little bit with your flush cutters, and then just close your clamshell. Make sure you've lined your clamshell up, because sometimes they can get off sideways. And um, this one is a little sideways, so I'm just kind of straightening him out. and then squeeze the belly of the clamshell gently and then right above the belly on the loop squeeze very tightly and then squeeze towards the top and this one did get a little sideways so let me see if I can straighten him up okay, this one wants to be stubborn So I'm just going to get it aligned as best as I can once I put my, um, that's as best as I'm going to get that. That's a little bit off and I got it a little bit munched up there, but I can put my, um, jump ring through it and straighten it up a little here. Then I am going to do the other side the same way. So I'll just pick up my clamshell first, put it on from the bottom and then put on a tube. Now there are different methods to do this and I'm going to show you very quickly. So you don't have to deal with the clamshell the way that I just I just dealt with because they have a tendency to do that. They get kind of off center and they can be difficult to close properly. Um, they're not terrible but it's just it's just an issue with a clamshell and I'll show you a different way of ending these two so now I can close this one and see this one closed nicely I can squeeze it a little bit and then I can squeeze the top and it closed perfectly this one did not but what you can do is you can use some little crimp tubes with loops and I thought I had some out and I will show you in the next segment here how to use those and they work out pretty darn well and they look a little bit better on the ends than the clamshells do too but they're more expensive than clamshells and you don't get as many in a package so clamshells are you know the more affordable way to go so either way now we have our two ends here and um, I'm just going to take a jump ring and I'm going to open it and I'm going to put my chain or my clamshell ends on my jump ring and then I'm going to put on my clasp and close it and then do the same thing on the other side Maybe with the necklace, I'll use some of those crimp tubes so you can see how to use them. I've already made a necklace with the clamshells, and I've already shown you how to do it here. So it won't be, um, if you have the clamshells, you can still do that. So we're going to drop on the toggle and... Close the jump ring, I think. Did I close you? I have had the hardest time with jump rings. I have bought so many, and I, I always end up having to cut them flush because they're not ever flush. 
They don't close properly. Okay, so I don't know if I was in camera doing that, but I just put a jump ring on the two clamshell ends and um, put it on the clasp. So this is what I have. Let me show you what it looks like on. Turns out really pretty. And that's what that looks like on the wrist. And like I said, it's a little bulky with the toggle and considering we're using this really fine chain. So you can use a lobster claw too. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be a toggle. Now make sure that I didn't twist these. Nope, oh, they're good. So that's what that looks like. And this one, the other one I made, I made just a little bit shorter. So it fits my wrist just a little bit better. I think I cut six inches instead of six and a half on this one. So I'll show you how this one fits. And um, you can elect to do whatever length you want. But if it's just a little bit tighter, I have to get coordinated. If it's just a little bit tighter, then it kind of holds its shape a little bit better. So here's what this one looks like on. And it, they're just, they're really pretty. And, you know, they lay nice. And like I said, the toggle is just a little bit bulky. So you could use either a smaller toggle that doesn't have these little um, divisions here and it won't bulk out because it always hits right on that division and kind of bulks out. But you can use whatever kind of clasping you want. You could use a little fold over clasp. That would be really pretty. Um, lots of things you can do. A box clasp would be gorgeous on this too. So let's go ahead and make the necklace and we'll call it good for this video. And I'll make a couple more that have a couple projects so that you can just kind of um, get your presents done. So here's the necklace we're going to make. I'm going to go ahead and grab some crimp tube ends and show you how to end it with the crimp tubes instead of with the clamshells on this one. Okay, so we're going to make a necklace this time. I have cut 17 inches of my beading chain because I want around an 18 inch necklace. I want this to kind of hang high simply because it has this one pretty little bead and I want that to be right at the base of my throat. So we're going to be using 17 inches of chain unless of course you are a very small person then you're going to use 15 inches. If you are a larger person then you're going to use 19 inches. So. Um, I have my one crystal, I have a toggle, I have a couple jump rings, I have my little spacer beads, and I may need to get more out, and then I have my um, crimp, size one crimp beads, and then I have these two little ends. Instead of my clamshells, I am going to use these little ends. These are sterling silver little ends, even the gold ones and the rose gold ones. This is the platinum color simply because I have more of these and so I grabbed these and um, they are one millimeter hole with a little loop on top. So they fit on the end of your chain and you can just crimp them down like a crimp tube. And they end the chain very nicely. I have some that also have your clasp on the end and an extender, so you can do that too. Um, like I said, they're more expensive and you get fewer. You get 10 in a package, whereas you can get the, the clamshell tips, you can get 20 grams, which is a bunch. It's a lot inside a bag for about the same price that so you can get 10 of these. So that's why um, I included the clamshells. But I'm going to show you how to use these in case you want to. So what we're going to do now is I am going to get my piece of chain and I'm just going to drop my crystal down on the middle here. And then I am going to put the ends together and center my crystal, making sure that my ends are flush, like this. Now I'm going to hold on to my crystal and hold on to my chain so I don't uncenter my crystal, and I'm going to pick up a crimp tube on either side of the chain. So I've got my little crimp bead here, and I'm just gonna drop it down, and then I'm going to get my other crimp bead here, 
and drop it down and I'm just holding onto this crystal and the chain because if you just hold onto the crystal the chain will move inside it and then again I'm just going to center it I was trying to hold it but I'm going to center it like this anyway because this crimp tube does not want to slide there we go so I will center it again yeah, you just have to do whatever the beads dictate. You think you're going to be all clever and hold it and everything's going to be fine and you end up doing the step that you decided you weren't going to have to do anyway. So, I'm going to center this as best as I can and it's being stubborn. So, give me just a second. Okay, now I have it centered. So what I can do here is grab my flat nose plier and I'm just going to crimp down one of these as tight as I can and then I can push the other one against the crystal and again you don't want it to be supremely tight but you don't want a lot of slack either then just crimp that down just like that and then I'm going to lay out my chain again I'm just going to do it sideways here so it's in the camera better and my ends need to be together so I did get a little off center so I'm going to I'm going to compensate for that by trimming off what's off center here just like that now now that I have that I am going to lose a tiny bit of length but I can always put an extender on it if I need to you can be more careful with your centering I was just not so careful I mean I was trying to be but it didn't work out great so now I'm going to pick up a crimp tube on either chain here I've just learned that things are going to go the way they're going to go and I just go with the flow. <laughs> just adjust to them because they don't usually go the way I dictate. So I just go with the flow. Now I want to put my chain back together and I do want to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to do one side first and then I can um, judge the other side by the side I started. Uh, I want about, I'm going to get you in closer, I want about an inch here from my crystal. And you can lay it out straight now that you have your center and you can measure it on a ruler and mark right where you put your bead so that it's perfect. That's fine. But I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm going to put this right about here. I'm going to squeeze it down and then I can line up my other one with it or I can go measure it and mark it too I think that's about right I'm going to squeeze this one down and then look at it and it's pretty close now if you get it wrong and you decide you need to move it, just squeeze the crimp tube the opposite direction because you squeeze it flat. Squeeze it on the opposite direction and open it back up and you can either take it off and put another one on because now it moves or you can reposition it so you're not stuck. So I will reposition This crimp tube is still in decent shape, even though I moved it, so I can use it again and squeeze it down. Okay, so eyeballing it isn't perfect, but I'm going to look at it and see. That's pretty close. So I'm going to go with that, and then I'm going to pick up five beads, this time actually five. Maybe that's why I had five stuck in my head because I did the necklace last, last time. So I'm going to pick up five of my little spacer beads. 
and put them on my chain. And you know, just have fun with it. Just play with it. It doesn't have to be all this crazy, you know, stressful thing. It just, just have fun with it. If it doesn't work out perfectly, well, it doesn't work out perfectly. You can always redo it. You won't waste your chain by crimping down on it. Like I said, you can, unless you do the size two and you actually crimp it down with your crimping tool, then that's a little different. But we're doing the type that can be reversed, so just play with it. You can spread beads throughout this too. They don't have to be patterned like this. You can just, you could just put a whole bunch of little singular gold ones on. Whatever you want to do. I mean, there's lots of ways to do this. Okay. So I've got my beads on either side here now. I suppose I should center this so you can see it. And now I'm going to put on a crimp bead. On either side. And drop that down. Someone told me when she was watching and my ring went off. Um, that was the ring alarm on the door. Um, and her dog started barking. Huh, that's funny. Okay, so now this is what I have. I am going to, I'm going to try to get my hand out of the way here, but I'm just going to pick it up now because everything's pretty much stable and I can just crimp that down. Making sure that there's no slack, but I'm not strangling the beads on there. And now I have two sections of beads stabilized, just like this. And then I can come to my end and put my ends on. And this time, I don't have to drop anything down. I don't have to put a crimp tube on because the crimp tube is on my end here. So the way I like to do this, I have to get my crimping tool out. And I like to position my um, crimp bead in my tool first. So I have my flat end towards me here. These are kind of curved this way and the flat on one side. I put the flat side towards me and then I just kind of position my crimp tube in. So I'm holding it in the first divot just so I can grab it and then I'm going to position it into the second divot, the one closest to the handle. And I want this crimp tube flush or even a tiny bit recessed with the tool. That's why I like to use the flat side so I can feel that it's either flush or it is a tiny bit recessed. And then I just take my beading chain and I put it in that tube until I can feel it hit the back of the tube and then I squeeze. And now it's on my chain and I need to use the first divot in my crimping tool. So right here, my first divot, I will position this sideways on my tool towards the bottom of the crimp tube making sure that it is flush or somewhat um, recessed in there and then squeeze again. And now I have a perfect little crimp at the end of this tube as you can see nice little ending perfect and I can just put my jump ring on there and put my end on. So that's what I will do I will grab a jump ring and I will open it and then I will put on my clasp. Now if you're using the clamshell you will just pick up a clamshell, drop it on from the bottom first, put on your crimp tube, lift it up and close it and that's how you will end that. I'm going to go ahead and put my other crimp tube on put on my clasping. We'll come back and look at the things we've made in this video and call it a day. 
Okay, so I've laid out the little things that we've done together, and all of it looks really pretty together. This Ne this bracelet goes as well with this necklace as does this one. So we're going to get close here so you can see the ends of the necklaces and you can see the difference between the little crimp tubes and the clamshell endings. So let's get in close so you can see basically the difference. So either way is pretty, looks nice. This end is just a lot less bulky and more seamless and it's it's very pretty. I prefer this way, but this way works great too. And like I said, it is the more affordable way and it is actually easier to do than these are. Even though sometimes your ends don't line up perfectly like this one. However, you can't really, you just don't really see that. Um, even though my ends were not lined up perfectly on that one clamshell, you just you just don't see it. So I straightened it up enough, it turned out nice. So the clamshell is just fine to use. And the crimp tube endings are just my preference. So this is how you do this. Ta-da! We have got several pieces of jewelry made in a very short period of time. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, then please consider subscribing and maybe hitting that like button. Click, blah, 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 I can't talk. Um, you know, the notification bell would be a good thing. All of that stuff. And I would appreciate it very much. Have fun and have a good day. Bye-bye.